The Point of View is brought to you by Cowbell Coffee. Cowbell Coffee. Taste it. Love it. Kel Chaco Toothpaste. Kel Chaco. Happy Smile. Hello, welcome to the Point of View, the Point of View is our favorite current affairs program on television. On the Point of View, we select the right topic, we get the relevant guests, ask the right questions, and we bring you some insight. Tonight on the program, we are looking at the Ghana Revenue Authority. That agency has been in the news lately for good reasons and reasons people deem not so positive. They have been ramping up their efforts to rake in more taxes. The state or government needs money. And in the economic environment we find ourselves in, I mean, it's trite that we need more money. And that agency tasked with the responsibility of uh, collecting money or taxes from the people appears to be re-strategizing. So they recently introduced what we call the EVAT invoicing, which is uh, causing some stir in the uh, big supermarket arena. A number of supermarkets and shops have been closed because they have failed to comply with the EVAT invoicing regime. We will look at that tonight and see what really the EVAT invoicing is, what is intended to achieve, and why it is generating so much controversy. We will also travel to Kumasi to find out what the issue is with the GRA and the traders there. The traders in Kumasi, at least for Edum, have shut out their stores, or they have closed their stores to the public. They've been doing so for the past three days. They are angry and unhappy with the system generally, but it appears the GRA is the one uh, bearing the brunt of their problems. We will look at all of that. And also, um, the, as part of that, it is appearing to take some political twist. Interestingly, the national organizer of the ruling party appears to be angry with the GRA, and we want to find out from him why he is not supporting the state agency to raise money for the government so that they can break the eight. We'll find out that the show is live and you can join us via our WhatsApp line 05 055 and we'll read your messages to the world. My name is Salom Adunu, sitting in for your regular host, Bernard Abler. We'll take a quick break, return, introduce our guest, and then we'll get a discussion underway. Don't go away. Banana. Banana? Okay, Dad. Including mocha, Cabo has five flavors. Banana, strawberry, chocomalt, and coconut. What is the fifth one? Strawberry. No. Uh, are you feeling hot? Honey, including mocha, Cabo has five flavors. Strawberry, banana, chocomalt, coconut. What's the fifth one? Choco malt? Hey! Coconut! Hey! Nutritious and refreshing, Cowbell has a flavor for everyone. They think I don't know. This advert is FDA approved. Yeah, welcome back to the point of view. Tonight, we're looking at the GRA and uh, its matters it's been having across the country. They have, been they have been trying to raise money for the state or for government so that we can use those monies to build the roads, the bridges, the schools, and to feed ourselves. Uh, but it appears that they are not having it very easy. They're trying to be innovative, introducing the EVAT invoicing uh, policy or program. Uh, some are happy, others are not happy. Uh, also in Kumasi, uh, they appear not so happy with the GRE. We'll look at all of that. So tonight to help us deal with the matters um, will be Dr. Joseph Obin, who is the Guta president. Dr. Joseph Obin is the Guta president. Doc, you're welcome to the program. Thank you so much, sir. We'll also have Dr. Stephen Nabarasi, 
who is a member of the EVAT technical team. Uh, Dr. Steven Nabarasi is a member of the EVAT uh, technical team. You're welcome to the program, sir. We also have Charles Kusi Apiakubi, who is the executive secretary of the Edum Business Community. Uh, Charles Kusi Apiakubi, executive secretary of the Edum Business Community. And also, we'll be joined by Herina Nabuachi, who is a national organizer of the New Patriotic Party. He authored a uh, document uh, criticizing the GRA uh, for uh, the way or the manner in which they are uh, carrying out their activities in the Ashanti region, Kumasi precisely. We want to find out from him why he will not uh, deal with the matter in a certain way, but he decides to go all out and do it that way, and what really his thoughts are generally on the matters. So uh, this is our discussion tonight. Doc, once again, you're welcome to the program. Thank um, you so much. Your people are not so happy, especially those in Kumasi, about the GRA. Of course, we'll come to the GRA and all the things they are doing. But how is the business environment for your people? Uh, Kumasi guys are not happy. Uh, some of your guys are not happy with the interest rate, etc. Generally, how is the trading or business community in, in, in the country? This is about the worst time mm. or worst period to do business. Oh. Our capitals are dwindling. Mm. Our capitals are being eroded. Mm. And um, the rate at which is um, being eroded um, we do not foresee any uh, future if we do not fast track our efforts um, to solve the problems that we are encountering in this economy. But the, the, the problems, um, what, what's, what's your, um, your prescription of solutions to the problem? Um, we talk about industrialization, I mean changing the, the structural nature of our economy. Our economy is mostly import based. That's where a lot of your people come. A lot of your people do imports. And so once you do imports, you, you have to, I mean, you get to put a lot of pressure on the dollar. And that is what the problem is really. So the dollar uh, uh, flourishes against the city. And so we have the situation we have now. What is your prescription of the solution to the exchange rate crisis we appear to be seeing as Guta? Yeah, um, you are very right when you say that industrialization is the way forward. And as a matter of fact, that's why um, I cherish so much the government effort of um, 1D, 1F, if it, it should be revamped and then fast track. And but is, then is, is, it, it why, is, is it dying? Why should it be revamped? Uh, well, well, yes, um, the, the way we all have our, uh, anticipated um, how it will uh, be, I, I, I guess we all know that um, the rate uh, is a bit slow. It's not happening as fast as exactly, it. especially when we know that that is the way forward. So yes, industrialization is the key, and so we have to make a conscious effort to increase or intensify productivity. And um, if we are able to do that, and then we are not also overpricing our productivity, and then um, we are at par with the rest of the world, then of course, um, then we are found our level. But um, is, is that the case? Mm. Now, we, we are doing excessive importation, like mm. you, you said. And it's true. And I, I'm not particularly happy about that. But the more importation means business for your people. No, it does not. You, yeah, if you let me land, then you understand. Okay. We do uh, excessive industrialization, uh, 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 importation. importation. But there's a way um, to stop that. Mm. There, there's a way to contain and control it. And so that's why we have given so many um, um, solutions to this particular uh, problem that we are encountering, mm. excessive importation. Because um, sometimes we have the demand and the supply of the forest. Mm. Because um, we have been getting balance of payments surplus mm -hmm. uh, for about three, four conservative years mm -hmm. on. But if we have a um, balance of uh, trade, it's mm -hmm. not to be. It's because of the leakages, mm -hmm. because of the excessive demand on the forest, the limited forest um, that we, we, we get as a country. And um, let me tell you, the bulk of importation that we do in the whole of the country, mm -hmm. the part of the locals is only 15%. 15%. If you see the, the import that we do from a person from Tamale, from Kumase, from Takrade, from Accra, we're going to, uh, we settle from here to uh, Turkey, India, 
and China. Dubai and China and all that. Most of us go just about, about yes. So just the bulk 50. of it is where the bulk of it. The corporates are the um, the the foreigners, especially the China um, Chinese that have come. They are doing direct dumping into the system. Mm. And so, if we we are doing excessive um, uh, importation, then you have a, a a key to it. You have an investment loss where you use investment loss to drive the so-called investment not into the trading sector, not into the importation, but drive them into the industrial and uh, more industrialized sectors of the economy to agriculture and all that so that we can increase on productivity. But that's not to be. We've made our um, investment law so easy for people who otherwise have the capacity to have gone into manufacturing to identify that it is easy to go there and they all come there. And when they come there, they do not bring the correspondent fund mm. of importation. They just get the GIPC certificate and presto, they are there. And then their, their manufacturers start um, shipping the goods in here. The, the, require, the, the law stipulates that they must bring in a certain amount of money before they can do business in Ghana as foreigners. And you are saying that when they are coming into the country, they don't come in with that amount of they, resource. They don't come with anything. And, and what, what the law says is that you bring one million or equivalent of goose mm -hmm. in one million. Mm -hmm. So it, uh, it does not stipulate. But what the law refused to know that when they, they bring the one million goose, it's not only one million goose that they are going to bring. Mm. Because most of them bring about a thousand containers a month. Mm. So if they bring, what, uh, all that they are doing is that they are bringing goose for forests. I they see. did not bring the uh, correspondent fund. Mm. So another question should have been asked in the investment law that how many containers do you want to do in a year or this particular year? They say maybe 500 containers. Then they ask what is the value of these 500 containers. Then they say maybe it's $10 million. Then you say, okay, you don't have the money here. So how do you provide? Bring it and then we put it in. Bank of Ghana. So you use this money to import your goods. It's as simple as that. Very you don't well. do this. So, so very well. That, that, that's an interesting one. We may get into that maybe today yes. or some other time. But to, today, we're, we're dealing with uh, GRE. So, um, Dr. Stephen Nabarasi, who joins us on Zoom, is a member of the EVAT technical team. Doc, you're welcome once again to the program. Uh, we've been hearing a lot about EVAT invoicing. Um, what is it? And we understand that it's becoming the sole medium for VAT invoicing. Is that correct? And, you know, wh what kinds of businesses uh, get affected with this VAT invoicing uh, regime? Thank you very much, Salam. Uh, good evening, Salam, and good evening to your listeners. Um, the Doc, if you can EVAT unmute, system... uh, kindly unmute so we can hear you. Okay, so can you hear me now? Okay, so go ahead, go ahead. Okay, so um, good evening, good evening to our listeners. Um, the EVAX uh, system, which is also known as the electronic invoicing system, is uh, a system introduced uh, by GRE, but it is used worldwide. It's not okay. actually a new system, used worldwide uh, VAT invoicing. Um, there is a system where we integrate into the uh, system of every taxpayer who has been registered with us, or we give you um, an electronic uh, free invoicing system for those who are using manual invoicing. Um, it is aimed at uh, taking away or transforming our manual regime into an electronic process where there will be authentication of every invoice that is issued by the taxpayer um, or business and validated by GRE. Um, this invoicing system covers all uh, GRE or all registered taxpayers, PAT registered taxpayers. And um, as we move on, we'll escalate it into all other taxpayers who want to roll into the tax net. All right. Um, so, I mean, I, I, I just couldn't 
hear you very well, but I mean, we will we'll just make we we'll, we'll just make we we'll, we'll just make progress. So you know what? Um, I mean, how how does this work in 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 areas where, for example, you do not have connectivity? Um, how how does it work? Uh, the, the electronic invoicing system is in two folds. We have the uh, what we call the integration, where people who are already using their own software in issuing invoices, the Commissioner General will uh, integrate into that their system. And once they issue an invoice, uh, the Commissioner General uh, authenticates or validates that invoice uh, in real time or near real time. For customers or uh, taxpayers who do not have their own invoicing system and are using a manual system, GRA provides what we call the free invoicing system. And the free invoicing system comes in uh, different forms. We have the online version, we have the top desktop version, and we have the mobile version. So all taxpayers who are uh, not using their own invoicing systems would uh, use these uh, invoices. So you can download it onto your desktop and you can use it uh, to issue invoices or you can use the mobile version if you are a taxpayer who moves around to sell or you can use the online version if uh, you, you, you want to use the online version for free invoicing system. But for taxpayers who are already issuing their own invoices, who have taken permission from GRA to issue their own invoices. They integrate into those systems. And then uh, once you issue the invoice, the Commissioner General authenticates these invoices in real time or near real time. I, I see. So what, what, what really is the mischief you're trying to cure? What is the problem you're trying to solve by introducing this EVAT invoicing? Uh, we, we hear that um, you have suspicions that some of the taxpayers uh, under invoice and under declare and, and, and stuff like that. Is that really the case? you have evidence to support that? And is that the only reason why you are introducing this new uh, um, regime? Thank you, sir. Um, the, 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 I, I think that um, the authority has done a lot of uh, work in this area um, concerning the issuance of invoices by Taxpayers. We have always done invigilations, we have always done uh, audits on these taxpayers. Um, we have uh, gotten to know definitely that some uh, taxpayers actually under invoice. Uh, we also have what we call the carding invoice carding, uh, which happens in, in, in most uh, companies, some companies uh, that has also been established. And so this uh, uh, is definitely supposed to keep. Uh, some of these things. And then at the end of the day, uh, GRA is able to even uh, get to know um, how much revenue uh, you are expecting from a particular taxpayer uh, in terms of that, even before the person comes to file, because GRA has the, the data that is coming from the taxpayer, even on transaction basis. And so GRA is able to establish that um, tentatively before the taxpayer now comes to uh, declare his uh, uh, returns and file his returns to the authority. Um, apart from that, uh, GRA also uh, is able to help even taxpayers with this system. It even helps taxpayers to also get to even assess themselves and know whether what they have uh -huh. been doing in terms of um, sales revenue, even from their companies, even rights, because uh, they have people who are working with them. And this system also helps them to be able to ascertain the revenue that they are also even getting uh, in terms of uh, their monthly uh, turnovers and their monthly revenues. I see. So for now, as we speak, and as you've said, I mean, the focus is with the large enterprises or large businesses. When are you going to scale up to cover everybody in the country or every entity in the country? So this particular exercise is a phased um, exercise. Uh, we we are we are starting we have started currently with uh, 50 taxpayers, um, and we will be rolling out in phases to uh, the large, and then moving on to all other taxpayers across the country. Uh, and we are expecting to we want to get to roll out to all these taxpayers 
um, by the, the, the close of the year, next year, definitely all uh, taxpayers registered with GRA, we would have rolled out to everybody and mocked up all of them uh, on this e invoices. So just, in, just curious, how, how much of a stakeholder engagement did you have with your, your, should I call them customers or taxpayers, before you embarked upon this? I'm saying so because beginning of this week, we've seen quite a number of big shops and big supermarkets, big entities closed down because of what you call lack of compliance with the e-VAT invoicing regime. Didn't they know that from maybe such a date, lack of compliance or non-compliance will lead to this? You know, how was your stakeholder engagement and why are we here? So um, we started engaging taxpayers for um, a long period now for since the beginning of the year, around April, we started engaging all taxpayers who were supposed to be part of this particular phase. Um, we have engaged them severally. Um, we have even assigned uh, relationship managers to these uh, taxpayers who on daily basis are interacting with these taxpayers. Um, we've also uh, even, we for those taxpayers who could not even uh, integrate that we are locking down. We sent them even warning letters. We interacted with some of them and told them that 1st October um, was the go-live date for the EVAT system. And for that matter, um, we indicated to them that all those who were not able to go, uh, we will crack the whip. And even after the 1st October, we re-engaged them and wanted them to still get on board. And for some of them, they still remain recalcitrant, and that's why this action happened. I see. Uh, this is a point of view. Uh, we are live on City TV and Facebook Live. We want to take a short break. We'll return and delve into the other matters. Um, Charles Kusi up here will be speaking now. We have this in the studio. We also want to find out from the GRA why they think this is generating so much controversy. And we'll touch base with our colleagues in Kumasi to find out what the status of their, their sit down strike or action is and when hopefully they can open their shops so you can get your goods as and when you want it. Don't go away. Different era, better result. Time has changed and time has brought Kel Charcoal Toothpaste. Healthy gums, anti cavity, fresher breath, and it whitens teeth. Chocolate toothpaste. Sankofa. Yenchi. Kill chocolate toothpaste. Happy, Happy smile. This advert is FDA approved. You're welcome back to the point of view. We are looking at the GRE and its recent uh, programs it is rolling out, especially the EVAT invoicing program. We also look at G looking at GRA in the context of what's happening in Kumasi and Guta generally. Uh, the Kumasi people are not happy because they, in fact, they have, problem, they have a twin problem. They have a problem generally with the general tax mm -hmm. issues, which I think should be directed at the managers of the economy. And they also are not happy with GRA because they say GRA is coming down very hard at the MGRA, perhaps is doing their job. Uh, let's go to Charles Kusi Apiakubi, who is the executive secretary of the Doom Business Community. He leads a group of uh, traders who say they will not open their shops, you know, because they are unhappy with the system and that the, 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 the system has imposed killer taxes, what they call killer taxes, on their businesses. They are not making any returns. And the GRA 
it's not helping matters either because the GRA is also not relenting. They want to take more money and so they are not happy. Hello, Charles. Um, good evening. Welcome to the program. Um, yes, we, we, we generally have an understanding of what your issues are, but can you spe spell out for us in one minute what the core issues are? What are your issues with the general economic environment? And then you go ahead and deal with the matters you have with the GRA. Okay, thank you, and very good evening to yourself and to Dr. Alvin. Doc, good evening. Good evening, my dear. <laughs> uh, your viewers as well. Uh, thank you for the question. And in one sentence, uh, we could probably put our issue as the VAT system do not sit with the structure of our markets. The FMCG market is a very unique market. Its characteristics is so unique that we need to take your time to appreciate it. Government has not taken his time to appreciate the dynamics and seeks to always import policies that are working elsewhere into the market. That has been a fundamental problem within the FMCG. And the most difficult aspect of it, it, it has created an impression that we don't want to pay taxes. That impression alone has created a, a cold blood that runs between businesses and that of um, the policy implementer, that's GRA. So this is basically what I could put in one sentence and the challenges that we are going through within our market. I, I, I see. So, so it's interesting because that, that really is an impression being created that you, you don't want to pay taxes and if you don't pay taxes how do we get to develop the country and so you have shut your shops because of course you've heard some of your members say that well you shut your shop so gra won't get the money you also not get the money and what do you mean by uh you know the vast system does not sit uh well with the structure of the the, the market you you operate is it that the gra or is it your, your case that a GRA does not understand your business? For which reason you are making that claim? Or what exactly are you trying to say? It's, it's not only about GRA who doesn't understand our market government. Who happens to be the policymaker doesn't understand the dynamics in our market? Let me give you an idea um, of how our market looks like. Um, FMCG market has the longest distribution channel in all the markets in Ghana. It has also the biggest market in terms of um, coverage because we, we basically sell everything consumables. And because of the long distribution channels, you could have an importer playing a role in the market, a wholesaler playing a role in the market, a distributor doing same, and a retailer before you get your consumer. So you look at the value chain in such a market and you say you want to introduce value added tax. And by the principles of value added tax, at every point in these transactions or this value channel, you are supposed to apply a certain tax to it. So a single line from an importer, let's say VAT apply to an importer at the wholesale level. You know, at the distribution level, there's a VAT applied to that same person on the single product we're talking about. It travels one, two, three, four, five to the final consumer. So before it gets to the final consumer, you will see a cascading effect of double taxation on a single or multiple taxation on a single item. That makes item obviously expensive. And no one wants to buy an expensive um, uh, item. The other aspect of our market is that it's, it's not regulated market. Therefore, entry to the market is very low. Anyone can come in and move. So you don't need to register with VAT before you can sell in the market. You don't need to have even a fiscal store before you can sell in the market. So we have high non VAT compliance within the market. So if you want to introduce a vast system, you should avail yourself with those challenges for the system. So for me, who is a registered VAT agent, I am required to charge 
the VAT at every level of the transactions that I sell. And that person who is not registered do not sell. Automatically, do not add the charge. Automatically, my price gets expensive and higher than that person. So I am ripped off right from the scratch of competition. And when you're a consumer and you get to the market, you want to buy a cheaper item. When this continues after a period, obviously my business will be collapsing. And let's assume I have a facility from the bank that I need to meet an obligation. And for a whole month, I have no able to sell. How do I pay my debt with the bank? If I have staff, and I can tell you, we are the highest employing market in Ghana. One company can have over 50 to 60 staff. So looking at the challenges, if I don't even sell, I am obliged to pay every month their salaries. And not only their salaries, I am supposed to pay their pay. The point is, at what point can, I, can my working capital support this kind of expenditure if I'm able to sell? So I am compelled to join that group who don't want to charge the VAT so that I can stay in business, pay my debts, pay my staff, pay my rent, pay my utility bills, and make some earnings for my families as well. But sh shouldn't you rather be helping the GRA locate those you say are not charging the VAT so the tax net can be widened, so we bed in share? Shouldn't that really be the approach? That probably could be an option that we could be looking at. But the challenge is, what is the relationship between business and GRA? If there's bad blood running through business and GRA, how do you get support from businesses to ensure you enroll more people into the task net? GRA approach and government approach is all about how do I make GRAs and government approach is all about I, I see. Um, so just, just just hold it there. I, I will come back to you. But I, I understand I've been joined uh, on the line by um, uh, Henry Nanabuachi, popularly known as Nanabi, who is the national organizer of the New Patriotic Party. Uh, this ordinarily uh, is not a political or a partisan discussion, but he, he, he issued um, a statement uh, calling out the GRE and kind of asking them to stop the way they are implementing some of their, uh, their measures in the Ashanti region because in his view, uh, the way they are proceeding will lead to loss of employment and businesses. He's joined us on the line. Hello, good evening, sir. Welcome to uh, the program. Um, ordinarily, we should see you supporting government policy. Government needs money uh, to run the country and we are in such a big crisis uh, that we've gone to the IMF to look for money. The IMF team has been in Ghana to do debt sustainability analysis. What we're hearing is that there's going to be some debt restructuring just so government gets some more fiscal space to be able to, to, to do things. So we should actually be talking about revenue mobilization. Why are you uh, on this path, you know, against the GRA, which is an agency of state, of an agency of your government, a government or party has given birth to? Uh, uh, hello, uh, good evening, and good evening to your viewers and then your listeners as well. Um, I am going to proceed uh, um, along maybe two fundamental lines. Number one, I am not against GRE efforts to maximize the new mobilization, not at all. In fact, I'm even happy that with reasonable grounds, if, in their view, if a certain entity is not complying with the attacks of mediation, they should quickly move in and then take some action. I'm in support of that. Now, what I am against is this oppressive and suppressive mood where you wake up because some of the issues
practice I'm hearing from the traders that GRE deployed some personnel to be shop, and then they will be marking sales. For me, I think it is of no short. Look, the period we find ourselves is very difficult. Very difficult. And look, from 2019 to 2022, if we are talking about the difficulties traders face, you have no idea. They face huge difficulties. So yes, we understand that during the COVID period, government also supported Ghanaians. So in our quest to also support government rates with the news, it is important for us to be more welcoming, be friendly. Look, tax is not a pleasant thing. Naturally, if you leave us, nobody will want to pay tax. It is not a pleasant thing. So if you want to maximize revenue, what you need to do is to be more friendly. And you need to be more engaging. And that will lead you to my second point. My second point is that I saw on City TV two days ago when shops were closed down, array of shops in the room. And I asked myself, what is the official position from GRE as I speak? Is it a case that the communication department is dead? Is it a case that they don't have a PR we need? We have not seen or cited any official response from them. I, I see. They, they have actually been been talking. The uh, uh, Commissioner General um, recently addressed the press, and, and, and I'm sure he spoke to they some of. He, he, I'm sure Hello. he spoke to. I'm sure he spoke to some of those issues. But I mean, back to your point. No, the, the, talking, no we have one even on our show tonight, Doctor uh, Stephen Nabara says even on our show. So they've been talking. The 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 point you make about stationing people at the shops. To mark sales, what, what, what's wrong with that? Because if you are not under declaring sales, what, what's what's wrong with it? If I am doing the right thing, you know, I declare the sales as they are. Why would I be worried if the GRA sends somebody to come sit at my shop to mark sales? You know, so Salam. yes. Salam, this is my position. First of all, if GRA has reasonable grounds, for instance, I saw I saw in the news I think two days ago that. Um, for their e-blood invoicing, um, China Mall is not complying, and I've also seen, I think, today that Palette Mall is fully compliant, and then it cools down. I support it. Because reasonably, you have ground that they under declaring. So I support it. No, but j j just, so to correct, just, friend, just to correct that, that just, just if to, you have a shop, yeah, no, no, showing, just to offer no, this correction. No, 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 let, let me make it. No, no, let me just, it's have, important to make this correction. I'm not sure okay. China Mall and Co. were closed down because they were under declaring. They were closed down because of non-compliance no, 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 no. to the e-VAT e invoicing if, no, system. No, what, you, 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 what I'm trying to say is that if you have grounds to believe that they are under declaring, and in this case, or they are not complying with a certain policy. So in this case, they were not complying with their e-VAT invoicing. So I agree. You can go in there and get a certain action. But then, when you go to a room, and then you have an array of shops, because the explanation I've got from GRE, that is why I'm saying that they need to be doing more engagement. The explanation i got from GRE is that the market to school ground to believe that they are under-declaring multinational, big, big companies. Those are their target. But when you target retail shops, I, I don't I, I find that oppressive. And it, yes, you mentioned it. Why, why would you want to station your personnel in someone's shop? I mean, I, 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 I find it quite oppressive. Look, unless maybe, indeed, you have requested for the person's books, the person is not complying with a certain policy, and maybe you have alerted the person on several occasions, the person is not. Then maybe you can take a certain action. But, but Nana, if I have reasonable I'm, suspicion... I'm promising all of this, Salah. I'm promising all of this within the context. The situation we find ourselves, we should be more welcoming. We should be more engaging. You educate people when you when you come on TV, TV to educate people about the taxes, what you intend to do. People will understand you more because tax or taxation naturally it is not a pleasant thing. So uh, that is why 
And let me ask this question again. I'll repeat it a lot. Where is the communication department of the PI unit of GRE? I see. My, my only concern is that this action of yours will politicize the, the efforts that the GRA is seeking to make and then set the traders against the GRA stroke government and then things become a bit difficult. Are you not encouraging this honesty? If I sell X CDs and I tell the GRA that indeed I sold X CDs and it's correct, why should I be worried if the GRA stationed somebody at my shop to be sure that indeed I sold X CDs? Should I close my shop because of this? That is GRA's own problem. I mean, GRA will have to find money to pay the person he's stationed at the shop. More than times where even, even the government is trying to limit human contact, where, where digitization is the all of the day, and then we are stationing people in people's offices. Look, there was one person who called me. And Ghana, some people are superstitious. Some people have their own thing they believe in. There was somebody who said that, ah, you are bringing somebody, you are stationing somebody in my shop. Do I even know the spirit, um, the, the, the person is guiding me? <laughs> somebody even called me and said it. So that is what I'm saying. People must be educated. People must know what you are doing, your movement. Because... You are seeking to maximize revenue, which I support it. But if the people you are seeking to generate the revenue from, if they find it oppressive, are you sure you can realize this? I'm not sure. And I, see. Again, I am not politicizing it. That, this is not politicizing at all. That is why I laid a certain foundation that I am in support that they should maximize revenue, but I mean, not, not in support of the implementation. If the implementation will be seen to be oppressive, I think that the GRE should rethink and have a different strategy going forward. Very well. Their PR unit or their communication department must be up and doing. They must be engaging. They should come to CCTV. They should be educating people, CCFM, educating people. What is this? Very well. Very well. Then I Th thank you so much. I I'm sure you, you, you should find time so you, you come around. We, we have a longer discussion on this. Thank you thank so you much. Thank you very much. And, 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 and we hope to talk to you some other time. Thank you so much. Anna uh, is the national organizer of the uh, New Patriotic Party. He appears to have difficulties with the GRA's approach in how they are handling the matters in Ashanti region, Kumasi to be precise. Some of the traders have shut their shops. I'll go for a quick break and then I'll come to Dr. Uh, Dr. Obing on some of the issues raised so far and what his own ideas on the matters has been. I still have Dr. Uh, Steven Nabarasi, who is a member of the EVAT technical team. I still have Charles Kumia Piakubi, executive secretary of the Doom Business Community. And I have your text messages too. Let me just take this one. Um, this one from Augustine says, the government is only interested in getting revenue to use on unnecessary things. The VAT rate is too high, especially in this government. Charging VAT on NHIL, get fund, and on COVID levy, why? Uh, I'm not sure about this. But VAT is now different from NHIL, and then get fund, and there's COVID levy too. If government, if government want more revenue, they should go back and implement the VAT law during the Kufo regime. Well, uh, this one says, uh, I suggest if GRA wants to increase or widen the tax net, they have to reconsider tax holidays and duty free that are given to multinational companies and stop chasing local businesses uh, who are already struggling with their jobs. Um, this is from Grandin Man in Kwesim Mintim in Takradi. This is the point of view. We will come back shortly and then um, delve deeper into the conversation. The power, the performance, concentrated power, concentrated performance, the partnership of concentrated power.
So Clean, the official regional partner of Paris Saint Germain. Hotel presents Fresh Anguamo with all the great delights. Fufu in a flash with Koto, Yemadie, and Akrantie. Almighty Gobe with Koko and Eggs Ish. Crispy fried chicken with rice, pizzas, and whatever else you're looking for or need to pay for. Hubtel presents Ghana's most useful app. Hubtel is everything you. Yeah, welcome back to the point of view. We are looking at the GRA and the matters it is facing um, in respect of its efforts to collect more money for the state or for government. As you know, government needs money to do things, and especially around this time that uh, we are visiting the IMF and there are issues of debt restructuring, etc., hanging around our necks. So, Dr. Um, Joseph Obin, Guta President, um, I know you've been speaking to your people in Kumasi. Yeah, um, the view generally is that if you know you are declaring the right thing yeah. and you are not under invoicing, why should you yeah. have a problem with GRE placing its agents by your shop to mark sales so they can be sure that what you declare is the right thing? Yeah. Um, uh, uh, traders are very decent and we are law-abiding people. We are very patriotic and we want to um, mm. pay our taxes. Mm. But that is not the issue. Mm. The issue here is that there's a, a, a confusion around the, um, the, um, the VAT system itself. Mm. The, the way the VAT is structured, it does not ensure compliance in the first place. Mm. But the, the way the VAT um, is structured, um, we have complained even from March. Charles came to Accra and we wrote a lengthy um, 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 a, a petition to the Ministry of uh, Finance. Later, we also petitioned through GRE that while the tax system is structured, it's not uh, ensuring uniform, uh, uniformity in the first place. There's no equity. There's no fairness. Uh, in that, we have three tax payment, uh, VAT payment system running concurrently in the same vicinity. Mm. First, we were paying... Um, um, VAT flat rate uniform um, for five years of, uh, among all of us that you, you pay you do um, um, the v, uh, VAT upfront at the port and then you come again and, and charge 3% and that has been the system for five years. The problem started when um, um, the, uh, uh, they said that we should migrate into the standard rate mm. in March so when that came then the problem started because then they also brought a threshold that if your threshold, uh, you operate within 500,000, then you are still um, um, uh, have the, um, you are still mandated to uh, operate under the uh, flat rate. Whilst those beyond um, the threshold of 500,000 um, do the, um, the uh, standard rate. We, and then we have another set of people by the same threshold. So it's not that um, um, uh, Charles and his people should go and tell um, GRA uh, who are not complying. GRA themselves know the people who are not paying the VAT. They say that their, uh, um, uh, their capacity is less and they, they cannot capture everybody into the task net. Mm. So we have three category, uh, ca categories of tax payment in the system. Mm. One is the standard rate of 19.25%. Mm. And then another is the uh, flat rate of uh, 4%. And then yet another that do not pay the VAT at all. And mm. there's no compulsion on the part of the consuming public. That we use the VAT to take care of uh, uh, health you, to take care of education, to take care of everything, and that you are mandated to um, take the VAT invoice. I believe that most of the people gathered here, or uh, most Ghanaians do not collect VAT invoice unless they've gone, gone to the maybe supermarket where um, the VAT is embedded mm. in. 
So there's no compulsion there. Then the consuming, the consuming public has the dis discretion to choose where, where, where to go. Where to and buy. so those collecting so the VAT are at a disadvantage. At uh, then you're at a disadvantage. You become a victim. Very well. And that, uh, this is what we have been talking about. And we have been complaining since March. Very well. And but, then now, the, what provoked uh, the whole situation is that once you are not listening to apply it, to uh, make that thing uniform, um, uh, uh, to ensure they compliance and all that, your, at your product, and that's the problem. It's Very not well. that we are running away from anything. Very we are well. law abiding and we pay our taxes. We are very decent uh, people, uh, but the system as it is the does not is ensure not, not uh, compliance, and we, uh, we we are going to refuse anybody who are going, going to force us because any tax that uh, a, a tax has not made to suppress the business to uh, destroy businesses. No tax are made to enhance businesses so that the tax system itself can re uh, uh, replicate itself. And make the country grow. And make the, the country grow. Very well. grow. Let, let, yeah. let me go to Dr. Uh, Stephen uh, Nabarasi. So, Doc, uh, quite a number of concerns have been raised about the, the, the way the implementation of your programs are, are going. And I know you are specifically a technical person on the EVAT invoicing. So, people have said that the way you've gone around to close shops, etc., wouldn't that rather you know, affect negatively your revenue mobilization plans because you need the shops open so they can sell, so you can tax them. And generally, what's your comment about your so-called poor communication on some of the areas, especially as raised by uh, Nana B? I mean, you have just a minute and a half to, 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 to do that. Thank you, Solom. So, I, like you said, I will, I will just do the EVAT issues for now. Um, uh, definitely, uh, there are there are times that you have to always swallow the bitter pill to be able to get well. Um, you can't say that once you are sick uh, and the pill is bitter, you would not swallow it. You will swallow it to get well. Um, we took this decision not just because Commissioner General wants to lock down shops, but uh, Commissioner General also knows that these shops must uh, comply and integrate into the system but this is a new policy, this is a new uh, act that has come into the, 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 the country and then uh, all taxpayers must comply. And so uh, the management of GRM, Commissioner General, do not just take it uh, just to close down shops and allow people to, to suffer. No, we also know that our revenue definitely is at risk. However, we also believe that uh, this system is supposed to help us to rake in more revenue. And once we get this done, where we should be okay. Um, I'm sure that the publication uh, uh, issues um, are dealt with and will be dealt with, are always dealt with by our communication team in general. Very well. So that, that, that was snappy. So, Charles, um, how long will your shops remain closed for? And are you not losing money? Uh, are you not losing money? Have you tried to engage the GRA? I understand you are having some discussions with the regional minister uh, and, and all of that. When will the shops open? Are you going to stay closed until something is done, or you are just doing this to send a certain message or signal? Yes. Um, we have not received any invitation from the regional minister for any engagement. Let me put that on record. Two, our issue has nothing to do with GRA as an implementer, but we have an issue with the policy maker. You see, I don't know the kind of market intelligence they take in developing their policies. You listen to GRA officials, they are talking about EVA system. And they want to rake in about 750 million Ghana cities. Who are those that they are targeting? And, and what number of businesses are they targeting to earn this kind of revenue? Businesses do, we do not set our business because we want to pay tax so. We set up business because we want to grow our economy. Mm -hmm. And when our business get better, that's where we can pay our taxes. So any policy that has to do with the business people must be designed with the business people. And that policy must sit with the business people. Mm. I listen to the chair official and he says that sometimes you have to take beta pills. Let me tell you what, some beta pills can kill. It is not every bitter pill that we must take. Sometimes there are better pills that are not bitter, that can get us better solutions. Very well. For us as business, 
Our businesses are collapsing, and we cannot sit unconcerned to see our hard toys go down. So we have taken a decision until our policy issues are addressed, or there's an assurance from the policymaker that it can be looked at, we remain resolute with our decision to close shops until we get better solutions that will support our business. And let me sound this again. Dr. Obin put it right, Doug. It is not that we don't want to pay taxes. We want to pay taxes, but realistic taxes that sit with the kind of business that we do. Very well. Government, you have to taste to put in mechanism that can help you maximize on your revenue mobilization. Very well. And we have preferred solutions. Very well, Charles. So I, I think that, that point has been made. That, that, that point was emphasized earlier by Dr. Obing. So I, unfortunately, we ran out of time. So I think the discussion will continue. The discussion should continue. Uh, the players, all the parties are around the table, and I'm sure the discussions will continue. Um, thanks so much to my guest, uh, Dr. Joseph Obing, Guta president, who is a very good friend to the show. Mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Stephen Nabaras, a member of EVA technical team. Uh, you earlier had Henry Nanabwachi, national organizer of the New Patriotic Party. And then Charles Kusi Apiakubi, executive secretary of the Edum Business Community. Uh, this is our, our show today. Uh, we hope that you enjoyed it. And let's keep the discussion going. My name is Selam Adunu. See you some other time. The Point of View is brought to you by Cowbell Coffee. Cowbell Coffee. Taste it. Love it. Kel Choco Toothpaste. Kel Choco. Happy Smile. <laughs>